The Apprentice, pelicula semnată de regizorul Ali Abasi, a fost una dintre cele mai așteptate producții cinematografice din 2024. Filmul are în centru figura fostului președinte și actual candidat la președinția sua, Donald Trump. După apariția filmului în cinematografe, echipa de comunicare a lui Donald Trump a trimis o scrisoare oficială prin care a amenințat că va lua măsuri legale împotriva producătorilor peliculei. Pretextul invocat a fost acela că filmul ar fi fals și lipsit de clasă. De cealaltă parte, regizorul, scenaristul și actorii producției susțin că totul a pornit de la un scenariu bazat pe realitate, așa cum a fost ea consemnată de un jurnalist care a monitorizat și consemnat ascensiunea lui Donald Trump. The Apprentice are loc în anii 70-80 ai secolului trecut și urmărește momentul ascensiunii ca om de afacere a tânărului Donald Trump, interpretat de actorul de origine română Sebastian Stan. Alături de acesta, Jeremy Strong îl interpretează pe celebrul avocat Roy Cohn, cel care i-a insuflat lui Trump toate principiile pe care și-a construit parcursul în afaceri și politică. I think the movie doesn't need much explanation. It's been hard to talk about because um, I think that um, this is a very scary time and uh, and and truth is compromised. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what's going to happen um, because like Ali says, history is happening right now as we speak. Regizorul peliculei The Apprentice, Ali Abasi, a fost în România prezent la Le Film de Cana Bucarest. Într-un interviu în exclusivitate pentru Euronews România, Abasi ne-a povestit felul în care acest film este sau nu un instrument politic și ce putere ar putea sau nu să aibă asupra electoratului. It depends on your definition of what's political, obviously, but uh, it is political in a way that it deals with Um, you know, power structure of U.S. politics and like power dynamics and you know how you gain power, how to you manipulate yourself to more power and so forth. But it's not about you know condemning Republicans or Democrats or you know, it's not party politics. And also, you know, I think film is a political medium. It's one way to be a director from United States and uh, to make a movie about Donald Trump. Right. And it's a different thing to be from Iran and Denmark because you actually uh, mm. work and uh, live there. Right. And to make a movie about Donald Trump, you keep a distance. Do you think that helps? I think it's helpful, but then on the other hand, there's this tradition that, you know, you know, in Hollywood people, you know, you know Ridley Scott does movies about Somalia you know Michael Winterbottom or whatever uh, mm. Paul Greengrass does a movie about another place in the world and and uh, you know Ben Affleck does a movie about Iran and so I don't think they think overtly about oh we haven't been to that part of this world or not they just you know they just treat the world as sort of They, they, they want to tell that story, they tell that story. And I try to do the same. You know, I was like, I'm interested in, in this story and, and, you know, this this world. And, and obviously, I think it's helpful in a way to be outside of the system and see it more clearly. But it's also like, you know, there, there are also like some stuff with, you know, uh, there's a context that I'm not part of, you know. So it's a, you know, sort of a gain and lose and I think it's more I try to make the kind of movie that I think I could make best which is seeing it from the outside I record everything in case I need it well that's illegal you have to be willing to do anything to anyone to win the, the audience uh, really realizes the fact that all that Donald Trump is doing right now is something coming from Roy Mm -hmm. Always fight, attack, attack, attack. Never admit you are losing. Always, you are always a winner. Roy Cohn was the only teacher Donald Trump had, and he gave him like this, like you know, homework of three rules. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was that way, but I think there, there was a way Roy was operating, and I think you know, Mr. Trump, he's like a sponge. You know, he he sort of. He's whatever he's look he, he around him that works and is popular. He sort of takes that in him, and he very much operates in that way. Um, 
And in fact, not only him, but like the whole sort of American populist right. You know, the, the, the stuff with, um, you know, Roy Cohn rules, they're not that unique or original. It's sort of a paraphrase of any other fascist, you know, mm. movement, basically. You know, um, <laughs> you know they, they all have to do with manipulation of reality and they all have to do with you know being on the offensive and they all have to do with if the context if the reality if the news if the story works for you great you shape it that way if it doesn't you just create a new one you know mm. and you know and 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 i think the you know one of the things also that roy really taught him was complete disregard for principles i mean Mr. Trump used to be a pro-abortion Democrat. <laughs> His dad was a lifelong Democrat. Roy Cohen was a Democrat. And now he's an anti-abortion Republican. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm sure if, if, you know, there was a, a better way to, to gain power, he would become that person. If it was a pink party, which he had to like put on a like clown hat, he would do that, you know? I mean, the, uh, I, I, think, I think his stunts tells you everything you need to know about him, you know? The garbage, garbage man stunt, you know? I, I think that would, I think Roy Cohn would, would love that. You were talking in an interview, and I liked uh, this uh, syntagma about uh, social Darwinism. Right. Saying that the winner takes it all. Do you think that this applies to Donald Trump? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think that, um, I think um, they, that's also part of the, the allure of him, that he, you know, there's this, you know, we've been living for many years now, like maybe the past 20, 30 years in some sort of like liberal framework yeah, where like identity politics is really important. And you know the minorities and LGBTQ and blah blah, which you know I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. But I think what that ha what that has led to is all the other big conversations about class, about social class, about politics, about you know sort of different other ways that you know people have power or you know blocks of power. Mm. They have been pushed aside, and I think in a way what he comes and says is like, you know, he's like, he, he, he is a fundamentalist in a way, you know, the same way that say Al-Qaeda was a fundamentalist, meaning uh, Al-Qaeda saw that there was a deep crisis in, in, in the Islamic civilization. Their answer was, let's go back to the time of Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, and, and we just have to go back to Quran and do exactly what it says. Like we need to go back, yeah. and that's exactly what Trump is doing. He's like, you know, f this identity politics and all these like uh, gay people and and transgender and 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 uh, women taking over. We have to go back to the time where a burger was a burger, a man was a man, yeah. and you know, yeah. and uh, you know, the the police could sh shoot and beat anyone they wanted. You know, it is a kind of fundamentalism, and that fundamentalism has a very strong allure in a time where it's uncertain, there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. There's a reason Al-Qaeda was popular, you know, the way it was. Yeah. And there's a reason he's popular. You have friends, probably Democrats and Republicans, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. America is huge. What do they tell you before the elections, after seeing your movie? Did they change their minds? Do they think the same? Can a movie change? This movie People is not designed mind. to change anyone's <laughs> mind. You know, it's it's really the whole point of the movie is that it it tries to go against this like polarization because I think that's a big lie. Mm -hmm. What I just told you about the way these people switch parties, I think that should be very telling about what the party politics situation is. You know, um, but they they of course they're great actors. They mm. pretend that. Everyone pretends, Democrats pretend that if Trump wins the election on Tuesday, the world is going to end. No, the world is not going to end. No, it's, it's, 
it's not going to be a disaster. It's going to be, do I like it? Not necessarily, but it's not going to be a disaster. Is it going to be uh, heaven if Kamala Harris wins? Not necessarily. I think she's a more competent manager, but because I studied Trump as a, as a manager, as a businessman, I think he's a completely incompetent businessman. Mm. Like if I had a kiosk at the corner, mm -hmm. I wouldn't trust him running that kiosk. Yeah. But that's a different thing. In terms of politics, I, I, I think that this movie is about something else, which is there's a structure of power, and no matter if it's Republican, Democrats, uh, conservative, liberal, it's the same, you know? There were moments while editing the movie when you said, no, this is too much, or yes, this has to be in the movie. Did it happen to you while working with your team, of course, because it's a team decision? I mean, we, we had an investor who basically consciously tried to make a pro-Trump movie. Um, you know, and I've been, you know, contemplating a lot about this. And, you know, in, th in the beginning I thought, okay, well, th it's a business decision. They want, you know, they want this to succeed and blah, blah, and maybe not to be controversial. But they really tried. They, they did what they could to, to make this a pro-Trump movie, in a way. And I think, you know, my job was to make sure that it doesn't become a pro-Trump pro movie. I, I don't necessarily want to do an anti-Trump. It's, it's not a, I don't think this is a movie about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, for me, it's bigger than that. But as much as I don't want to do a hit job on Donald Trump, I don't think it's worth my time. I don't want to, absolutely don't want to do a pro-Trump movie. Uh, you know, I remember uh, the, the first, you know, one of the first cuts of the movie, they, they had like 20 notes. Basically everything that was negative about him, even like him falling on his ass in the snow was a problem. Uh, so, you know, and, and that's, then my job is to disregard this really, both on this side, but also on the other side. And because also like on the other side, maybe some of my friends were like, you have to be more harsh. Why do you show him as being smart and naive and blah, blah. And you know, I have to constantly remind myself, this is a character. Mm. Yes, billions of people have opinions about him, but it's a character. The first rule is the simplest, attack, attack, attack. Don't you forget, I made you. 